Oh my God, doing the intro, doing the intro is always the hardest part of the video. Like somehow it just is, it's just kind of hard to do, but here we go. Hello everybody, welcome back to Needle Workshop. So today I'm back with a new tutorial for a pattern inspired by Setsuna from Yasha Hime. This pattern is part of our Half Demon series and is available for download online along with the fully written tutorial. The written tutorial actually has a lot of useful information such as information on how to properly measure yourself, some information on the types of fabrics you might want to use, the tools that you'll need, etc, etc. So before we get started, I'd like to preface the video with a lot of important information. To begin with, this particular pattern is actually made up of a bag along with a fur cover. The reason we've decided to include kind of a sub, sub part sub part, I don't know if that's the right word, kind of like um, a bag along with the fur cover is instead of essentially filling up the fur is so you can have better control over the amount of filling that you want to put into your tail. So essentially this will allow to do that more easily. We're also going to be including some sections in the bag that are going to be like tacked down to allow the tail to have a little bit more sway and movement and having that be done on the bag and then covered by the fur makes it very subtle, which you wouldn't get where you if you were to tack straight onto the fur. Also important to know is that there is two pieces of the pattern that are a two-in-one pattern. So essentially the costume has two tails and both tails are identical with the exception of kind of the end part of it. So you'll have on the pattern a line that tells you where you need to fold it so you can cut your second tail afterwards. This will save you some time in terms of when you print out the pattern and it will also save you a lot of paper because these tails are really, really big. Okay, also important to remember is that when you're gonna be cutting out your fur, you gotta make sure to follow the direction of the fur. It'll be indicated on the pattern in bright orange. Lastly, when cutting out fur, I highly suggest using a craft knife instead of scissors so you don't end up cutting the fur fiber and blunting it. You also wanna cut it on the wrong side of the fabric. We'd also like to do a huge shout out and a huge thank you to Mira Scarlet for working with us on this pattern. She was a darling to work with. The costume looks amazing on her. We are so happy with how everything turned out. And I'd also like to point out that she made the wig and the props herself. Now, without further ado, I don't know what this is. Let's get started. Once you have all the pieces cut out, you'll need to assemble together your first side pieces, section one, two, and three. The reason why the side fur piece was split into three sections is so that the direction of the fur is consistent with the shape of the final garment. Make sure to draw in the 2.5 cm overlap of the pattern onto the wrong side of your fur fabric. Making sure to place all the right hand side pieces together and all the left side hand pieces together, place the appropriate side over its matching overlap. Each side and overlap will be marked side A and B and overlap A and B on the pattern. So for instance, the wrong side of the side marked A will be placed on the right side of the overlap marked A. Pin them in place and sew in place by hand with a simple straight stitch. Once you're done, brush the fur out to make each section blend in seamlessly. Starting with the tail one short piece, make sure to mark your punch holes before folding it in half onto itself right side to right side. Sew along the side seam, making sure to leave a small opening of about eight to 10 centimeter wide towards the top area. Iron your seam allowance open. Realign the end of the tail to each other, right side to right side, and sew in place.
Cut off the excess seam allowance at the tip of the tail. Align your circle cap to the opening of the tail right side to right side. With your tail piece inside out and the seam allowance facing up, make sure to position the double notch of the circle cap to the right side. Align all your notches, pin in place, and sew shut. Make sure to leave the section between the double notch open. Using the open gap, turn your piece inside out. Take out your phone cap piece and slip it through the gap. Press it up against the circle cap. Pin your piece in place to help with the following step. We'll be sewing the foam piece in place using a simple whip stitch. Make sure your needle goes through the foam and the fabric to keep your foam piece from sliding out of place. Once again, make sure not to stitch over the area between the double notch. Now it's time to fill up our filling bag. Using a makeshift paper funnel, I'm going to start filling it up using poly bead filler. I'm using poly bead filler since it is very lightweight and will help make my finished garment lighter overall. I'm going to fill it up to about 80% capacity. To finish up, I'm going to use regular plush batting. This will help give the top of the tail a little more sway since regular batting is a lot less dense than the poly bead filler. Once I'm happy with the filling, I'm going to sew my gap shut with a simple hand stitch. The next part consists on tacking down the area with our punch hole markings. This can be done once again with a hand stitch. The reason we are tacking down this area is to allow the tail a little more movement since once again poly bead filler is extremely dense. This is what your piece should look like so far. Moving on to the longer tail one piece. Start by applying your buttonhole to the left side of the piece as indicated on the pattern. Most home domestic machines cannot make buttonholes this wide, so just make it as wide as possible, just like I did. Right side to right side, fold your piece in half onto itself and sew along the side edge. Iron your seam allowance open and realign the end of the tails to each other right side to right side and sew in place. Once again, make sure to cut out the excess seam allowance too. Turn your piece inside out and set aside for later. Take out your muslin bottom boa piece and muslin side boa pieces. Place the two together, making sure to properly align your notches and sew in place right side to right side. Rinse and repeat on the other side. Now take your muslin top bow piece and making sure to properly align your notches once again, sew it to the side piece right side to right side. I'm using pins and pinning at each notch to make sure to properly align my piece when I sew. Rinse and repeat on the other side. Here's the boa piece all sewn together. Now bring back your longer tail piece from before and align the back end of the boa to the open end of the tail, right side to right side. To do so, slip your tail into the boa starting at the front end. 
Make sure to properly align your notches. It's very important. Otherwise, your piece will not be assembled properly. And I also suggest pinning in place before sewing. Pull out your tail from the inside of the boa and you'll have your piece done and assembled. Okay, if your shape looks any different than mine, it means you did not sew the two pieces together correctly. I would suggest taking out your seam ripper, undoing your mistake and starting again. Moving on to filling up our second filling bag. Temporarily close the buttonholes with the help of a pin. This is so the filler doesn't slip out through said hole. Using poly bead filler again and our makeshift paper funnel, we're going to start filling up our piece. I'll be filling it up to about 80% capacity of the tail before switching to regular plush batting. I'll be filling the intersection with the batting before switching back to poly bead and filling up the boa to about 80% capacity. I'll finish off the piece with regular batting. At this point, feel free to close up your bag by hand or using a straight stitch on your sewing machine. I ended up closing my bag later, but this is actually a much better time to do so. And once again, you'll be tacking down the area with your punch hole markings. Now that both our bag fillings are done, we can move on to the fur cover. Take out your white circle cap piece and with the right side facing up and the double notch to the left side, sew a piece of Velcro six centimeters by six centimeters in the upper center side of the piece. I'm facing the camera on the wrong side here. So here's a visual diagram on how to position your Velcro properly. Pin your white circle cap to the phone cap, making sure to fold some of the seam allowance over the edges. Make sure the area with the double notch continues to be unobstructed and sew in place with a hand stitch. Now take out your shorter tail two piece and fold it in half onto itself right side to right side. Before sewing any of the fur in place, make sure to brush your fur out of the way as much as possible. This will help make the piece seamless afterwards. You'll need to do this to all of your fur pieces. I repeat, all of your fur pieces, but I won't be repeating myself every time on this one. So make sure to remember that. Realign the end of the tail to each other, right side to right side, and sew in place. Make sure to brush out the end of the tail before doing so, and then brush back the fur as previously mentioned. Turn your piece inside out and brush out all of the seam allowances. I suggest brushing back the fur, then brushing it to the side before brushing it out in the proper direction. You want as many fibers of the fur to come out from in between your seam. Place the fur cover over the bag filler. Make sure it's positioned properly. Roll the seam allowance in by one centimeter and pin it in place before sewing it in place by hand one last time. And once again, make sure not to sew over your small open gap. Moving on to the longer tail two piece, right side to right side, fold your piece in half onto itself and sew along the side edge. Realign the end of the tail to each other, right side to right side and sew in place. 
turn your piece inside out and set aside for later use. Take out your bottom fur boa piece and your side fur boa piece, which we have assembled together earlier. Making sure to properly align your notches, sew the side and bottom piece together right side to right side. Now take your top boa piece and making sure to properly align your notches once again, sew it to the side pieces right side to right side. Now bring back your longer tail from before and align the back end of the boa to the open end of the tail right side to right side. To do so, slip your tail into the boa starting at the front end. Make sure to properly align your notches, once again this is very important, and pin in place before sewing. Pull out your tail from inside the boa and brush out your fur. Now it's time to insert our bag filler into our fur cover. This particular piece is actually a little harder to slip into the fur cover, so just arm yourself with a lot of patience and just keep going at it. Find your buttonhole on the left side. I was feeling my way around until I could feel the pins that I've used to secure my buttonhole shut. Using a craft knife, cut open a slit of the same size and direction as the buttonhole. First, you'll pin your fur to the muslin and then re-pin your buttonhole shut so none of the filling finds its way out of the piece. This is actually when I decided to sew my bag shut, but as I mentioned previously, you should have done that already. So let's just move on to the next step. Now we need to attach the front end of the boa to the back end. I'm going to use a few pins to hold it in place and then I'm going to sew it in place by hand using a simple whip stitch. Ideally, you'd want to use a curved needle for this part. You can find them in most sewing supply stores. Make sure to sew all the way around. Now we need to secure the two tails together. Using a thick middle wire about 18 gauge thick, cut yourself a 66 centimeters long piece and fold it in half. Jab the ends of the rod into the EVA foam halfway deep through our little open gap. Yes, that little gap is finally serving a purpose. Unpin the buttonhole of the other tail. Fold your wire upward into an L shape and insert it through the buttonhole. Position your tail as you see fit and comfortable for you and then sew shut the extra space in the buttonhole with a hand stitch. Make sure you sew through both the fur and the muslin. Next, you'll need to secure the two tails together by hand. Make sure your tails are positioned in parallel to each other when doing so. Just a few stitches on top and a few stitches under. Thank you. 
Lastly, we're going to install a security elastic to help hold the boa in place around your arm. First, try on your garment and see where you'd like the elastic to be installed. Afterwards, you can measure out the amount of elastic you'll need for your arm. I'm using 3 8 inch wide elastic in black. Position the elastic where you'd indicated wanting it and sew it in place. This is the last of the hand sewing for this project, which I know is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's just one of those weird pieces that just required a lot of, let's say, creativity. Here's what the piece should look like with the rest of the costume. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's looking pretty nifty. As you can see here, the elastic is positioned under the arms and helps prevent the fur from sliding back. Now here you're going to need to place the other Velcro piece to the belt. Ideally, you'd want to try on the costume and see where on the belt you need to position that Velcro. But since the costume is actually a tad too big for my mannequin, I'm going to send this piece out to my model so she can comfortably position it herself. And with that, we are done. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the question, in the question box below. No, in the, dis, in the comment section below. Oh boy. If you like this kind of content, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you can be alerted to all of our upcoming projects. So, if you'd like to know more about us or see more work in progress, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Or all of them. Why not? So, yeah. So, until next time, good luck with your projects, guys. Bye-bye. I kind of need my screen to be there. So I can read. I need like a little teleprompter. I feel like that would be actually really helpful. All right. Well, we don't have. Okay.